Hey y'all, Coach and I here in part six of this series on the power of prayer. This is the last part of this series as we've been breaking down chapter 17 of the third testament of the Bible called the new way of worshiping God and in this section called the power of prayer. We've been wanting to keep these videos shorter so we've been taking these classes one lesson at a time. So if you haven't done so already, go in and check out the other five parts to this series. Or if you want, you can jump down to the description of this video and find a link to the Third Testament of the Bible. Both an audio version and a PDF that you could download to your device. In this video, we're going to look at verse 136. It says, If you had great faith, and greater knowledge of the power of prayer how many works of charity could you do with your thoughts talking about our ability to heal people and help people when they're in bad positions we can help people that are on the battlefield people that are sick people that are in prisons we can do so by way of our prayer from the comfort of our own homes, mere thoughts can help these people in their tribulous times. Remember that it is through prayer that all of humanity will be saved during the tribulation. These people will be praying through the hurricanes and the other unleashed elements. They will be praying through the earthquakes. They will be praying through the wars and through the famines. These are all charitable deeds that can be done by way of our thoughts but you have not granted to it the power that it has meaning that as a whole humanity puts no faith in prayer you see all that's going on pandemics and wars and famines and all of this stuff how many people are taking the time to pray that should be what television is about a place where everybody tunes in to what they should be praying for being constantly reminded that we should be praying our way through these troubles that the world faces. But even now and today, those that pray find themselves mocked and humiliated by mass majorities of people. Not granting to prayer the power that it has. And so, many times, you have not realized what you have turned down in a moment of true heartfelt prayer. Not taking, the, not taking advantage of what prayer offers us. Not recognizing the power in prayer. We're missing out. We're losing out. Verse 137 says, Do you not understand that a higher power is preventing the most inhumane of all your wars from breaking out? If you study the Cuban crisis that occurred a few decades ago, maybe a half a century ago, you'll see that these people were on the verge of a nuclear war. They even tried to shoot off the missiles, but they malfunctioned. Was it a malfunction or was this angelic powers preventing them from being able to fire these nuclear bombs off and kill millions of people? That's what's talked about there when it says that a higher power is preventing the most humane of all our wars. Well, this is still going on today. Not too long ago, our President Trump was within an hour of going to war with Iran. He has sent the bombers out already. And they were within an hour of dropping those bombs before they were called back. That would have started World War III. Iran is not some isolated country. They have the backing of both China and Russia. Do you not understand that taking part in that miracle are millions of the prayers of men, women, and children? This is why we didn't go to war with Iran. This is why the war with Russia and China hasn't started yet. Millions of people are praying against it every day. 
I for one say a prayer against those wars every morning when I wake up. And I teach my wife and kids to do the same. But I'm not the only one. There are others who understand the power of prayer. According to the verse here, there are millions of people that understand the power of prayer. There's almost 8 billion people on the planet. So if there was billions of people that understand the power of prayer, we wouldn't have to worry about war. Or famines. Or pestilences. Epidemics. Or anything that's threatening humanity right now. The prayers of these women, men, and children are preventing a lot of these hardships. These men, women, and children who with their spirits are combating the darkness and struggling against the influence of the war. We should take time to meditate on that for a moment. Maybe we can start to get in that fight as well. Using our power and influence to stop some of these wars and epidemics. We're talking about the power of prayer. It is our most powerful weapon on the planet. It is the most powerful weapon the world has ever seen. But what good will it do us if we don't know how to use that weapon? Or when to use it? Continue praying. Continue watching. But put into these actions all the faith you are able. Our prayers have to be full of faith. We cannot be doubtful when we pray. A doubtful prayer is an ill-effective prayer. So when you pray, you have to have faith that what you're praying for is actually going to happen. That's why you pray with love. You don't pray that any harm comes to anybody. My prayer for our president is that his actions result in peace. Pray, people, and over war, pain, and misery, Lay the cloak of the peace of your thoughts, making of them a shield underneath whose protection your brother may shelter and be enlightened. We learned in another part of this chapter that our prayer is a shield as well as a weapon. So we have to pray over war. Don't worry about protest signs and marches. Pray. We have to pray over pain. Don't worry about new drugs. Pray. And pray over misery. Lay the cloak of the peace of your thoughts. We have to pray concerning the wars of the world. Not worry about protest marches and speeches and bullhorns. We have to pray when we're faced with pain. And pray when our brothers are faced with pain. And misery. Not worrying about drugs or pills. We pray over these things. Thereby laying the cloak of the peace of our thoughts. Using our thoughts as a shield to protect our brothers. Our brothers need our protection. There's coming a time when our money won't help them. Our guns won't help them. Even masks and other PPE won't protect them. But our prayers will always protect them. Providing our brothers with shelter and enlightenment. This is the power of prayer. Like we said, we've done five other classes in this series on the power of prayer. Check those out if you haven't done so already. And also check out the other classes that we've done on prayer.
Prayer is extremely important. So we've done a lot of classes on prayer over the past few years. Hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. Leave a comment either way. And may our Father bless you and keep you. And may our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.